uh, you should take a look at it. It was. Uh, oh yeah. There's a lot of other certs out there pending, um, which could have substantial impact on the village and the school district. So all of us as taxpayers. And the one other item that David brought up to us is the uh, the interim uh, level, with, which isn't going to the point of granting our own assessor, is to intervene in specific cases that we mm -hmm. feel, and we know there are right. a couple of them coming up. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, we wouldn't be able to put a new assessor in place in any of that while that's going on, but right. we certainly would have the ability to intervene in these actions with our own attorney or mm -hmm. our own uh, That makes assessor. perfect sense. That makes perfect sense. The big, you know, the biggest difficulty of latest is when it, it, it's the town is unaware of the village the zoning law and makes the determination and therefore impacts our our uh, equal application of the law, things mm -hmm. like that, you know, that shouldn't go on. We need to look at it. I think it, that's an <coughs> both excellent ideas and I think we will, maybe we'll put it on the next work session to look into that. Great. That matter. Thank you. All right, thank you. Could you just take that note and do that? Any, any, Further discussion. Okay, uh, we'll do a roll call vote on this resolution. Do we need a roll call? It doesn't matter. Uh, Roy says I'm part of a roll call vote. Yeah. Uh, as no. our attorney put that in there. <laughs> that's what I, that's what I put it in. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. Roll call it is. Trustee Clark. Right. Trustee Matthews. I, I guess because I have to, only because I have to. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Trustee Roddy. Aye. Trustee Stewart. Aye. Okay, thank you. Okay, we'll that. Now we're going to trustee comments. Let's start with, uh, Clap. Okay. Um, sewer and joint right, nothing has changed recently. I just want to touch on the article that was in the record yesterday. Um, and David, feel free to jump in whenever you'd like as well. I feel the record didn't really paint an accurate picture of our ongoing relationship with dealing with the dirt pile and the DEC. Uh, just to kind of give a brief summary of what has happened in the past. The village has been working on the DEC every step of the way so far. A few months back, the village got the waste material classified as non-toxic, meaning municipal solid waste, not toxic waste. So any characterization that could be in the paper in the past with contaminated or toxic is not accurate because it's municipal solid waste. The meeting that we have this Wednesday with the DEC is a result from the report we submitted to them. The village asked for the four month extension four months ago. We were given so. We gave handed our report in on time with to the DEC. This meeting on Wednesday is a follow up to that report. So this will be to discuss things like time timetables, things like that. But we, the amount of time, although it's, it'd be, I can't say for sure, it's all speculation, but it, we're talking a substantial amount of time for us to find a good location for this dirt pile. The result, hopefully, will be finding some landfill that needs to be closed and is in need of some covering material, because that's what our dirt pile is ideal for, to cover a landfill that's being forced to close. So we've been working with them. Everything is on schedule. This meeting is not the result of any missed deadline. It's the result of us handing a report, and this meeting we're going to discuss their opinion of the report. Um, David, is there anything you want to add to that? But just a, a couple things, if I could. I mean, uh, the article indicated that, uh, and I just made some notes here, we had hoped to use the material to cap a landfill. Uh, I don't know why that's in the past tense. I mean, that's still on the table. Um, if we can use the beneficial reuse, that's still uh, allowed by the DEC. That time period hasn't <coughs> even commenced. So I don't, you can't say that it lasts. That's certainly not appropriate to say it's in the past tense. When they say requested an extension, when the article said that, the inference to me was we requested an extension for remediation of the stockpile. When in fact the deadline hasn't even been established yet, so that, that, that's not, uh, not an accurate statement. Um, he also said that we, we blew a deadline. Well, that's not 100% accurate either. If you look at the regulations, there's a period of time when you begin excavation which in this case would be the wastewater treatment plant for disposal of the, of the, of the stockpile. But yet we never have had a consent order, we never had a formal report, so there wasn't a, a deadline established by the consent order to quote unquote blow. So uh, that, to me that's misleading. I also will say in terms of my quote, my, my guarantee, I'm not Joe Namath, I didn't guarantee anything. I was asked the question, what will the deadline be? 
My answer was, I don't know because we haven't had the meeting yet. He said, how long could it be? I said, it could be a week, could be a year, could be five years. I don't know. He started to read the quote back to me. You said it could be a week. I said, John, it's not going to be a week. So the answer to the question was, I don't know. It got to be that I guaranteed that it won't be a week. That's how that happened. Okay, hey, just just one other thing to to, to piggyback on that. <coughs> Cornerstone has been contacting and talking about landfills that that are seeking material to close. So you know we're proceeding down this road with, with possible landfills that that could need this material. So we've been working on this since since we took office in April, and we continue to work on it. And in support of your efforts and the misleading tone of that article. Uh, when one doesn't bother with the facts, you know, and, and uh, uh, manipulate things to create a sensa sensational atmosphere in a newspaper, I find it very disappointing. Uh, I'd like to congratulate the work that the village has done on this, and on top of it, say how much uh, we all I know, but I'm speaking only for myself, how much we appreciate the uh, positive response that the EC has had to our and that it's been a very, very workable relationship, and I'm sure you will have a very productive meeting on that day. Good luck. Okay, anything further, Kyle? No, Ed? Uh, a couple of few things from the police department, uh, public safety notice, and there's a Nice colorful flyer here, Neil. Maybe you can. I'm sure Jim has probably sent this to the Indy, but maybe you can get this to them as well if, if, if they haven't gotten it. Um, on November 29th, the New York State, or at least New York State, revised the child safety seat law. Uh, now all children must be restrained in an appropriate child restraint system until they reach their eighth birthday. I think it used to be seven, if I recall properly. And it, there also used to be some weight limits, like your even under seven, but over a certain weight. Now it's just age eight, call it a life. It's a lot easier that way. Um, with that, if there are any residents that need help installing their child protective safety seat or certainly want to just make sure their home is installed properly, because it can be a little tricky. Uh, having installed a number of them myself, various brands over the years personally, uh, Patrolman Ryan Rich has been trained in this, I think earlier this uh, year we passed a resolution on I'm going to go take some training classes in this. Um, feel free to call the department at 294-7988, tell them that you know you'd like to set up an appointment for Patrolman Rich to look over your car safety seat and I'd be glad to uh, set up a time for you to come by. There's also a website by New York State to get some more information on the new law which is www.safeny.com. Also on November 25th, uh, I want to just say thank you to Patrolman Commodorio and Patrolman Rich who were very helpful to the Town of Woodbury Police Department and Village of Chester PD in locating and arresting two subjects involved in stabbing someone at Woodbury Commons. Uh, two were arrested here on Main Street. One was found in possession of the knife suspected of being used in the assault. And the vehicle, which was, I suppose, the getaway car, if you will, was found over at the government center parking lot. So, uh, great job by those two patrolmen. Um, <coughs> as a reminder, there's no parking on Villa Streets from 6 a.m. to 6 a.m. through March 31st. Also, no parking on Villa Streets during snowfalls of a half an inch or more. Uh, violators will be picketed and towed. Also, not so much a police note, I will say yesterday, uh, kudos to DBW. I was out trying to get around town, although admittedly probably shouldn't have been. I didn't realize how bad it was, but I <laughs> saw them out there with tons of trucks, getting tons of uh, assault down right away, and I think that was great. And also, just one other reminder when it comes to snow and ice, if you have a sidewalk or a fire hydrant in front of your house or property, uh, the ordinance requires you to clear them off of uh, snow and ice, and it's very important to take care of that for safety reasons. Uh, oh, and one last thing, and I happened to be present when this occurred. I have a meeting with Jim last week. Stop by for an informal meeting. Uh, on December 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th, uh, approximately 200 second graders from our schools came by the... Uh <laughs>